All right, hey everybody, uh, Jared Napolitano here, JNAP. Uh, I'm going to be doing episode eight of my stream series, That Time I. Um, this one's going to be a self review of my five February 2021 OCS losses. Um, so I think this would be kind of a neat opportunity. Um, <laughs> kill, kill a couple kill a couple birds with one stone here and review games where you know they, I didn't end up going my way in the end and you know I think one of the um, one of the things I think about a lot is um, how people like Chris Gogolin and Tom Kelly would do these type of review series in the last couple of years and how me being a, a returning player at that time how much I found a lot of value in hearing what they had to say and how they analyze games both live and replay sometimes their own sometimes others so um, you know I'm not not the greatest player by any means but I think Anytime you're kind of watching somebody else review their plays or watching just games in the current meta, um, you, you can learn a few things if you're a newer returning player. Um, and maybe maybe some other players, more tenured players, might might find this a little entertaining, but um, there were a handful of really close games that I played in this online championship series month. Um, I ended up going 7-5. and five. Um, We'll get into the games. I just want to do a quick shout to Chris Gogolin. So he just did his 94th episode of his series a couple days ago. You know, most of 2020, I know he got really busy with work, but, um, you know, ho hopefully he's able to find some time and keep cranking out some more episodes because it'd be pretty sweet uh, when he gets to episode number 100. Um, you know, that, that's just been a really, really beneficial series that he's done reviewing games live and, and replays that people have sent in. Um, so, so, again, maybe I could try to pay it forward a little bit with this review. And if there are some, like I said, you know, new returning players probably find this most valuable. Um, you know, the whole point of the series was kind of to utilize the new interface. Maybe we'll find some bugs. I, I don't know if we're going to find a lot more bugs with the replay function, but but maybe. Um, also, maybe to entertain, and then also maybe just some gameplay pointers. And unfortunately, I've received some positive feedback on the videos I've done. Um, and then the viewership seems to be pretty decent from what I see on the YouTube channel. So, so all that's encouraging. Thanks to everyone who's, who's watched these live or, or replays on my Twitch or on the PC YouTube channel. Um, you know, I hope to keep doing them. My goal is to do 20 this year. Um, they might be a regular pattern. I might do like this week. This is the second one I've done this week. They might be, you know, two weeks off um, in between. However, kind of the, the time and the, and the circumstances allow. So that's, um, that's a little bit of the intro here. So um, we'll get into my game. So I played Agents of the Black Sun, which is kind of my favorite. And, and frankly, I think the deck I'm best with lately. Um, all six dark side games in this month. Um, hopefully everyone can see the screen and hear me okay. Um, the Let me know if not. Um, so I'm on my game history here. Let me pull up. So the first game I played um, was against Kyle Kruger. Oh, this is not... Let's see here. <laughs> Looks like I just jumped into some random game. Um, let me hit play here. Okay, that's fine. All right, so this is against just shy Kyle Kruger, two-time um, world runner-up. He had a really good year in 2020. He was uh, top four of the MPC. He day two at Worlds. Um, he's now advanced to the round of 16 in MPC 5. And obviously just a really good player. Um, and I think he, I'm not sure what he did at Texas Mini Worlds, but um, yeah. So he was, I think, 6 or 7-0 and coming into this game. Um, he has that trademark dark side uh, Seder course deck with a lot of, um, you know, it's a very balanced deck and plays a lot of good cards. So I, I drew his light side here, which is far and away the most popular light side deck right now. He is the chosen one, really strong. Frankly, I, I don't mind playing as Black Sun against this. I, I thought it went pretty well. I beat um, Chris Kelly twice at Worlds um, with it. I beat Matt Sokol once, who's, you know, obviously an excellent player. Um, and I've had some pretty decent games here and there with it. Um, it's just, I, I've gotten better at how to play it and not to just put all my sights out. And I talked about that a little bit in my Worlds video tournament report, which is still available on my Twitch if anyone's interested of all, I guess, 12 of my games. It's, it's really long. So as much as I tried to be on the shorter side. And, and I will try to be on the shorter side with this tonight, but it's <laughs> as short as I can be, I'll put it that way. Because reviewing five games, I, you know, this is going to be longer than the other episodes that have kind of been ranging in between 30 and 40 minutes. Um, so I have my opening hand, not a great hand. I, I drew the square, which is, you know, good and bad. Um, 
I drew, this is uh, Scheiser's Palace. No, it's the Uplink Station. I drew the Vigo, who I can pull. So a handful of cards that um, you know I can pull. It's good that I got one of my five Emperors. Um, it's good that I got Battle Order First Strike, which is a card I never start. A couple people have asked me that. Um, I think First Strike is way more potent when it's going down the deploy phase right before you're about to blow open a big battle. Um, and obviously my deck list are, you know, public from world, so, and I, I, I think there's some people that know that I, I like First Strike and Draw Their Fire. I think they're really strong cards. They're basically, if your opponent doesn't leave Force, they're basically like a sense that can't be canceled. Um, and it, it's not something that everyone accounts for, or, or even if they do, it makes them play around it a little bit. So, so not the best hand, not the worst hand. Um, you know, I do my usual thing where I pick my two aliens. I, I've still been sticking with Erica Virtual and uh, Mitt. Thrawn you, Nudu, whatever you say it, um, Thraid, Tom Hade uh, is the um, the cosplayer for that picture. Um, so I can speed this up a little bit, you know, again, I don't want to dwell on or go slow when it, there is opportunity for me to go fast. So, so real quick though, I will say, so I learned a valuable lesson. Some of you guys might remember this um, back at the MPC in April, I was playing against Justin Desai in the round of 16. I was going way too fast and just threw out the Imperial Square and I trapped my Shizor or Shizor um, in between because the way the Coruscant location rules work, um, the Jedi Council Chamber and uh, Shizor's Palace need to be on opposite sides. So if you put the square on the right side, the, when Shizor's Palace goes out, it goes on the other side and then it takes you a while to get over there. And that's really bad because it gives the lights an extra turn they can camp out. I'll never make that mistake again, I, I don't think. Anytime I'm playing this matchup, I'm always extremely careful of reading on what side you want to put this. So um, I learned the hard way there, and that, that match ended up being a blow. I lost that game by 30, which was the first game of the of the match, and it was just basically over. It was really depressing to kind of lose a match on turn one from a careless mistake. And he even let me revert, but I did like three, four actions, and then it was just, it was not good. <laughs> So I didn't want to ask for a revert again. It was it was an actual misplay. It wasn't like a misclick or anything like that. So I throw Emperor out to the square. He pulls Goldenrod. Makes me pay the two. I kind of go back and forth on this, you know, with the value of getting Emperor out early versus, you know, getting him for three less deploy. Because now when they pull Goldenrod and if they're only giving one force, I don't have the force to do all the stuff with the Vigo to pull the site, deploy the Vigo, even though moving to here is free. It kind of backs up a turn, and sometimes I'm really torn on. Do I just, you know, eat it, hold on to Palpatine? Because um, the other thing, too, is that if Lightside does camp out here, I can't move Palpatine there. If I want to get him to a battleground, um, he can get trapped at a non-battleground, which, you know, has some drawbacks. So, so I go either way. I, I think if the Goldenrod's out and you're only getting one force from Lightside, it's probably better just to hold him. Um, so one of the lessons I've learned from this month. Um, so, you know, Buxon has all these different deck manipulation thing, so if you activate with wipe, uh, wipe them out, you can do the peak, you can pull the force lightning, put the force lightning down, you can do a lot of different things to kind of know where cards are. He gets Luke out first turn, um, obviously a good thing, keeps me on my uh, front side, I pull coward to not let him retrieve, and you know, as much as I played this matchup and thought about this matchup, the shields, there's basically like six shields I could need, um, obviously the grabber, Obviously, um, the fanfare to pull Caesar's Bounty, it, it's nice if you open hand it or you know where it is turn one so you don't have to burn a shield on pulling it. Um, but definitely that. And then one of the retrieval shields, usually Secret Plans is better, but sometimes Coward can be. The Sense Shield, so oppressive enforcement to protect my senses. Um, and then Resistance, a lot of times I want to pull as well. And then the Sixth Shield is maybe Co Clearance in case they have a Jedi Lev. Um, so you really can pull anywhere between one and three of the retrieval shields. And then, um, you know, resistance can come in handy, but the hope is that you use undercover spies or Tarkin's orders or some other way to kind of mitigate their drain so that maybe you don't need to burn the shield on resistance. Um, so he doesn't get the retrieval. I activate, I'm always very careful. You know, I, I could have pulled out another site here, um, but I think this matchup is bad if Black Sun puts out its sights, because then Luke just goes to one of them, takes them over, and then you don't want to move into them. You don't want to give them a drain. You know, it's a two plus one from the lightsaber site, where the sewers are the same situation, where if they go there, 
Um, so, so I don't like putting those sites out until I need to. And frankly, Hitco, even though it has a very efficient activation package, it doesn't have a really robust activation package. So, you know, even when Luke gets to be with the prophecy, you know, it's plus one and minus one, you know, since the V13 dropped. Um, but, but it's not like they're gonna be activating like 13, 14 pretty quickly. So, um, you know, he doesn't pull battle plan, which is interesting. I think neither of us do. I never, I almost want to take it out of my shields because <laughs> there was one game I played it by accident. Um, and it's really never a shield I want to pull. Um, there was another game this month that I, I did want to pull it. So, so I put out the sewer. It's good that Luke's committed there. Um, you know, it's nice having Voyeur knowing where that is as well. Uh, and that's where I'd make an interesting play where I use Lana Dobreed where I'm going to pay some extra force, but it gets uh, Emperor over to a battleground a turn sooner. So I hadn't really done this move before, and I, I think I was happy with it. Um, and I think he grabs it, yeah. And, and to me, that's great. I, I'm really happy when anything besides Tarkin's Orders or Voyeur or maybe even a couple other options get grabbed because um, those are the cards I want to be able to cycle. Um, even like Cold Feet, and I know I mentioned this one of my other streams, like I think you can make a good case for Black Sun to run two shield pullers because there are some games where you're like, oh, I need that one other shield, and oh, I lost my Cold Feet. Um, so I draw my Monarch, I have Bosk and Boba Fett. So I have a decent hand. I want to get to space next turn um, so I can start getting drains. Not another drain, and maybe be on three battlegrounds to start getting the ping through. So he's going to drain for two here. I top deck four Lom and decree V. Two cards that aren't like life or death um, with the matchup. And a little bit of spoiler here this matchup, he gets up big, and, and I am able to claw back into it. And like I said, obviously I lost, but it, it was a really close loss. So I think there's some good takeaways here. So he gets Leia out, um, reinforces Luke. Um, and that's going to be hard to cut through, knowing he probably has a leadership, he probably has a mess, he's, or sorry about the mess combo. You know, he, he's definitely got stuff um, and tricks, so I don't want to really battle into it. And I, I mentioned this in my other stream at one time, where Bastion said, like, you never want to attack into Luke, like, why would you ever do that? So, um, attack, attacking into Luke in this matchup with all the support cards that he as a chosen one has. Um, so, starting my turn three... Um, I'm going to, you know, we're going to keep kind of playing this game of chicken with who's going to pull battle order or battle plan first. But in the meantime, we're going to chip away at each other with, um, or he's chipping away at me at a faster rate, put it that way. I get my third sight out. I'm going to cycle force lightning. Um, you know, even though this matchup usually, um, so I get cat up here too. I just need to have at least like six forfeit in case he comes down with like Han Chewy Falcon. You know, I move Shizor. I do the draw with, um, I went to 2x, I mean, that went fast. Um, he top decks Rose. Um, I move Shizor over. I'm, I'm making sure I have a Black Sun agent at both sites so I can play Shizor's bounty. I do have an altar to back up a sense. Um, in, in a certain situation, I have a Gick, so I can kind of play a little more loose. And I have resistance out here. So even though I have the cold feet, um, I'm still kind of probably wanting, I'm going to want secret plans and maybe co-clearance at some point in this game to make sure he doesn't Jedi left somebody back. Um, Top deck imbalance combo, which is not good. That's a card I like to have. And same with barrier. Um, those are two cards that are, I find crucial um, in a lot of matchups. I don't. Um, Shizor's on Obi, figuring he might have like an EPP ray. Um, and at that point, I just burned my Shizor's bounty for, for no great reason. He's still going to be able to kill somebody. Um, maybe kill both my characters. So I you know, just pull Force Lightning because I know it's kind of towards the bottom of my deck. Um, he's got Yoda, Yoda's, and then he goes Ray. Yeah, so exactly what I kind of feared. So and at this point, I'm like, you know what? It's I, I don't want to throw good money after bad and throw out the shooter's bounty when I might have to burn my gick anyway. Um, so that's where I just save the shooter's bounty for another day and say, all right, if he wants to throw three guys here, it's a drain one site. Fine, you know it sucks that I gotta burn my gick this early in the game, but. Um, you know, it's not the end of the world here. So he draws and misses. Oh, no, he hits the hits both my guys. Um, and he gets the retrieval with Ray, which I think was Rose. Um, draws well. So this is a really good battle for him. And now, now I'm kind of kicking myself. I don't want secret plans. I think at one point he pulls do or do not. So then I'm like, all right, great. You didn't have many senses. So I maybe didn't even need the uh, my sense shield. So I got a stack for losing the battle. 
I lose both guys, and I'm staring at 10 damage, which obviously I'm going to use the Gick to cancel uh, the rest of it. And then he flips, so now he's going to have another point of retrieval. And this is looking pretty good for him. The other thing with Hitko is it seems like it, it can be hard to really chip away at the at their reserve deck because it can be very efficient. So I play Voyeur here, and I grab, I get two rescues, I think. Um, and obviously he can't grab it, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's like, darn, I probably shouldn't have grabbed that Lana, Lana Dobry combo because that's going to get really annoying. Um, so I just am able to now drain for one and one, um, throw Emperor back out, draw to ping, um, go for a verify, put Zam there, cycle my Force Lightning. Again, I want to make sure I have a Black Sun agent at each site so I can play Shizor's Bounty if I need to. Um, and I can't do that if it's just Emperor there because he's not a Black Sun agent. Um, you know, there's a couple guys who I, like I, P59 is not, I think Forlong technically is because he's an information broker, but um, the objective says, I think it's all aliens. Um, you are aliens with Black Sun and Lord Bounty Hunters and Information Brokers. Yeah, so to be frank, I'm not sure if Forlorn technically has one. If, if that aliens applies to all the other things or if they're all independent. Um, so he gets a drain of two through. I have resistance capping him. And again, see, this is where, you know, I, and this happened, I think, in one or two of my other matches. I have Battle Order. I don't want to pull the shield. He has no incentive to pull the shield. And I don't want to put Battle Order down without having a good op without following it up with a battle that I can take advantage of the first strike angle. So I'm not sure this is the greatest play on my part, um, or even the right play, let alone greatest, um, that I'm holding this. And uh and yeah, so now I'm gonna play Shooter's Bounty, knowing that he's already got Ray out. He can't play EPP Qui-Gon in uh Hitko, so I'm thinking he doesn't have any more lightsabers. Um he pulls now the Sense Shield, so a second Sense Alter Shield and do or do not. And Jin comes down. Who's going to draw if unable to otherwise? So if he can draw five, he gets to kill Shizor, and that again, I think, is exactly what happens, and that's going to set me back even further. So Rose, who was just retrieved, I need to draw five, or I draw six, so I avoid you know losing the battle and having to stack a card. Um, he gets to peek in my hand. He's probably like, why is this guy holding battle order when he knows I'm not going to? I'm probably not going to go to space. One of the early verifies I had, I did. Or I'm pretty sure it was this game. Basically, any game I play against Hitko, I'm very curious how much space are they playing. Are they playing, you know, one or two Han or Chewie and the Falcons? I know Sokol would use the two Princess Leia V, who adds a Battle Destiny with Han. That's probably the last thing I want to see, is Han, Chewie, Falcon, plus Princess Leia. That's two Battle Destiny, Destiny to Power. And if I don't have a barrier that gets through to protect my guy at the system, uh, Light Side's probably going to win the system there, because I, I haven't been playing Guri lately. I might consider it, because she stops more than one Destiny being drawn. Um, I do have Jodo cast, who cancels the second, um, but um, I, I'm a little vulnerable there, but I find that, and I, I told someone else who was asking me about agents, like, agents is usually either I just, I'm just trying to skirt around in space and just survive, or I actually probably have more space than, like, a, a Hitko deck, or I have at least enough space to kind of survive and counterbeat, um, but the biggest thing is, often, is having the barrier, and we'll see that in my, my second game, um, where that comes into play. So now he consolidates there. So now he's got a drain of two and two. Well, it would be three if I don't get to a third battleground. Um, and he's up in life force. He's got 28 down. I've only got 21. Our hand size are basically equal. Um, and he's threatening way more damage. And um, I, I, need to, I need to change the equation here. Change the trajectory is probably a better, better way. Why do, you, why do you say he got lucky, Eric? Just not, I didn't, I don't know. Why do you say that? So activate here. Um, I'm going to get a couple more drains through. Just keep chipping away with drains of one and one. Um, and now I'm thinking, I'm starting to get to the point with this turn of, I need to kind of, I can't wait too long to strike because then I'm not going to have all the force I need to, Put a beatdown squad down. Ha have enough force in my reserve deck to draw destiny to maybe have a card for sense. Um, so I can't wait too late. 
And that's where I'm pretty sure this is the turn I, I attack in to Luke. Um, I have the hidden weapons. I have uh, Boba Fett Bounty Hunter. When he battled Jin, the Shai's horse with Kyle, he forgot. That. Oh, oh yeah, so he got lucky that he drew the five. Yeah, because if he drew a four there, yeah, that would have been really good for me. Um, he would have lived and not sent me back. Yeah, I, I was wondering when that happened. I was like, does he have a five tracked? Um, or, or else, I mean, just, Hitco just has so many fives and sixes anyway. That So I do attack here in the, with Boba Fett. Um, and, and P-59, and he clashes Fett. Um, I guess my plan here was, I, I knew I had a six on top, I'm pretty sure. Or you know what I did? I knew I knew the order, and I wrote this down as I was reviewing it the first time, that it was, because I was kicking myself right after it happened, I was like, I should have shot Leia first, because I'm going to come down here with Dengar. So now he has no force or battle order first, for first strike. So now I'm like, okay, good. I'm going to draw to ping. I'm going to throw Dengar down. I burn my gick, though, so I have to be really careful about a counter beat. Um, and one thing I'm worried about here, too, is Anakin Skywalker V, which he can't play now because he doesn't have a force for it, because he could cancel the game decks of a character with ability less than four. So he can cancel either of these. So I might only get one shot off, or I won't get a battle destiny, or I can get iffy. But I, the way I had these destinies lined up, I was like, I can eliminate both these characters. But I did it in the wrong order. I shot Leia with P-59. I should have shot Leia with Dengar twice. Because remember, I just cycled the Masterful Move combo. That's what I did. So I knew there was a five coming up. But <laughs> in the moment, I didn't realize... Right. You know, P-59 doesn't reduce forfeit. I mean, I, I know that, but in the moment, I, I didn't realize it. So that's where this all gets screwed up. Because I'm like, oh, I'll just draw a six for Battle Destiny. Luke won't be immune because he's only immune if he's alone and with the Saber. And, and I'll kill both these guys off, and then I'll set him back. Um, so yeah, so I didn't know what this card was. I definitely know the next card's a five. He fires Luke, and again, he can't mess me here because he's not the force. That's where I'm, I'm pretty happy that I held on to the first strike. Um, he does hit P-59, and now I know I have a five, and I shoot with P-59. I should have just shot a second time with Dengar, and that, that was really bad of me. So now I still have another shot with Dengar, but it was basically I got greedy because I'm like, oh, I want to make sure he loses two force. But what's more important, wiping Luke off the board um, and setting him back a little bit. I mean, I'm sure he's got, he's got eight cards in hand. He definitely has another Luke in his hand. So I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not the best thing in the world because then he comes down and uh, at least he can't counter beat, counter beat me because Fett's still affected by um, Clash. So that's the one card I didn't know. And then I know that this is a six, but he's going to be able to just Punt uh, Leia to cover. Um, and he draws a six. So now I'm like, crap, I got a couple overflow. I got to lose two overflow here. This, this just keeps going from bad to worse. And then it actually gets worse because I'm going to forget about Fett's maintenance costs. So I draw two cards here. Immediately I play Voyeur. So I figure with Voyeur, I can just keep chipping away and maybe the pin and the draw with Shadows. And maybe I can get back in this. Um, and I draw like an idiot. I draw two cards and then I'm like, oh, great. And then I could have just left him there. This would have been great because I would have been on three battlegrounds. I could have drawn with shadows at the beginning of my turn, caused a ping. I would have blocked this drain of two. Now because I got to punt him, I just even set him out of play. So now I don't have resistance. So now this is going to be a drain of three. Um, this was really bad. So now, you know, when I watch this in the moment, you know, right after it happened, you're like, why did I do that? How could I forget about that? You know, these are competitive games. You know, at the same time, like like Eric said, you know, there's there's some risks that might not be the best risks. Um, everyone makes mistakes in games. Sometimes you make a lot of mistakes and win. Sometimes you make no mistakes and still lose. Um, but these are the types of mistakes that really, really sit with you and really irk, or at least me. So now I lose Failing's Fist, figure he doesn't have any space. Lose Greedo off the top. Now I got another Drain of Three to deal with, and, and I'm just getting really low. Um... But at least he's paying for these drains. So that's kind of good. Um, but I'm going to stabilize. And this whole game, I didn't find U3PO. Um, luckily, I was able to cycle the Voyeur. There's some games where I never find my Voyeur, and I'm really, really pissed off at myself. Um, he put Solo out here. He's going to move in front of me. I'm going to try to trap the Emperor, because I can't move to a site. Get some more ping in with Voyeur. He puts the site out. But he doesn't put anybody there. Um, I guess at this point, it, you know, it's not like he's giving me force he doesn't want to give me. 
So I'm going to now do, so I, now I have a plan. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, uh, let me get Jodo Cast back with the sewer. I toss Bosk. I have this hidden weapons that I was hoping to use the first time. I draw to cause the force loss. And yeah, so I guess I have this, it's a three, it's the voyeur, right? That's on the top. So I know I can capture him. Um, I'm going to battle. <laughs> Hold on. Every time I try to go fast, I'm like immediately regret it. So I battle Obi. Um, maybe because I figure I better battle him before he battles me because he might be able to put another guy down. Um, at least I can kill Obi. Maybe hope that he misses, which he does barely miss. He draws the six and the one. Um, I think with the Voyeur, I did see that he had a lot of ones in a row. Maybe I'm thinking of another time. Um, and yeah, so I guess I just put Jodo there and I'm anticipating using hidden weapons on his turn. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, so I lose Zam. I can grab a card. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I love Voyeur in this deck. So I'm able to retrieve a card with Caesar's Bounty. Uh, he Jedi Resilient, so that's a pain. Um, but I'm trying to remember what my plan here with Jodo Cast was. So he then tosses Walkling, cycles a, a six, so he knows where that is. I'm going to shuttle Cad down. Again, kind of getting a little more assurance that uh, he's probably not going to attack me in space. Um, I guess I know I have this three on top with Jodo, but I don't know what my plan was for if he just swung at me <laughs> and hit me first. Um, or maybe I just send him to use pile, maybe what was my plan. So his turn, he's going to use a three, drain me for two. Um, he's now up a decent amount. I only got four cards in hand, 16 total. He's got 25. He's going to go for the mess. I'm going to sense this. Yeah. Which is kind of a bummer because I was just sending it to the use pile um, and eating, you know, losing three cards basically just to keep my, my buddy Jodo here alive. Um and I'm just getting really low, and then I'm probably thinking to myself, I should probably just concede. This isn't this isn't going to go my way. But um, yeah, he's at 21. I'm at nine. He's up 12. Yeah, he's up 12 force here, and things are getting a little thin. But I know I have Battle Lord on my side. I know I have Voyeur on my side. Um, I know I have the Shadows Ping to kind of keep chipping away. Um, he throws Obi and Padme out. This looks like trouble. Look, I got another Emperor in my hand that I can just toss right down. He's going to miss Emperor again. So that was at least the second time. Um, I'm going to use Mitt to chip away as well. So I got a couple different alternative ways to damage him. Um, oh, uh, oh, that's right. He played Clash from Lost Pile. Yeah, good point. So that's that was what my plan was. That's why I ended up battling. Yeah, thanks, Eric. <laughs> that makes sense why I did what I did. Um, yeah, because that's that was the whole reason. And actually, that reminds me. Um, I knew he had impressive, most impressive floating around. Actually, I think he had it on top of his fort, uh, top of his lost pile when he did that. Because that's what I was afraid of. Is if I go and battle with hidden, he plays impressive, hits me, and then what did I accomplish? But then as soon as I put him down, that's right. When Solo played Clash, I was like, oh, okay, this isn't that bad. I, I think I can work with this. That's exactly what happened. Um, so Emperor fends off uh, Obi. I draw the six, so I don't even have to stack a card. He now goes to try to pluck me off uh, the Shizor's Palace location with Padme. And I'm going to draw four, so I just barely avoid the stack again. So now I'm getting some luck going here with, you know, my destinies are, are going well. I'm avoiding these extra pings from I Feel the Conflict. Um, I'm on three battlegrounds here. Um, I'm going to be able to cycle a warrior here and then play Hidden Weapons um, to capture Luke is my plan. Let me speed this up. This is probably going to be the... I think it's gonna be the longest game because it was the closest game um and obviously kyle had a great month i think he's still at the top of the leaderboard right now at nine and three with a do with a decent sos or a good sos um so it would have been really nice to get the win here um he does it verify with leadership and now yeah so now clash is done so Jodo can battle if i right click here I always forget. Well, I don't forget. I think on the replays you can't do it. Um, maybe if I pause it. But but anyway, I'm just going to put some more damage through. Um, 
And I figure if I can capture Luke, I can't get I can get Erica down and start retrieving with her, which again might be another way to flip the script here, which is exactly what I do. I because of battle order first strike, I don't have to pay for this battle, which is nice. Um, and I'm you know hoping he doesn't have hear me, baby. I I don't know if I had a reason to think that he's had it cycled. Maybe I saw it in his reserve deck. Um, my my good old trusty voyeur. I'm gonna capture Luke. Um, definitely don't want to send him to use because again, there's a very good chance that he just has another one right in his hand. Um, and it could just come down and counter beat. So now, now I feel pretty good. This this is like uh, a nice situation. One three battlegrounds. He's got to pay three drain two, but I can do you know a ping, retrieve one. He is shield busted, so I don't have to pay for aim high. Um, I could drain for two here, at mid pings. Like even though I only have nine force left. That was a huge turn. That really, uh, that, that was a really good turn for me. So now he's going to activate. And now he's got to start making these decisions of, do I have to, do I want to pay to drain, or do I want to start throwing more characters out? Um, and I, okay, even better. And I found my Tarkin's Order, which is a move I, a card that I didn't really consider until I saw Eric's list, uh, your list, Eric. I think it was from the MPC. Um, and, I, and I really liked having it in this. It helped me once to cancel a neighbor in. Um, it's good against it. could be worse. And then obviously most important, it cancels these drains up on course on sites um, against mains typically. Um, so Yoda's going to come over here. And um, he's then going to... I picked wrong there. I probably should have anticipated him moving um, to the sewer in front of uh, Emperor. And now Emperor can't move in front of Solo, but... I think I'm able, I don't know if it's just blind luck or if I somehow know where IGD-8 is. Because I'm going to grab him and use him to capture Solo and then be able to run away with Emperor. And then maybe even be able to cycle Tarkin's orders. Um, I'm kind of walking a tightrope here at the end here. Um, I want to keep finding my voyeurs. I want to keep pinging away at him that way. Um, I guess I force push to find I Iggy. That must be what I do. Knowing that I think... Uh, I got at least a three here. Um, boy, I hope I remember to retrieve here with Erica. Yeah, I did. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so I grab IG-8. There's my U3PO, which I wish I had early in the game. Although I did top deck imbalance combo. He probably would have just got, you know, killed with Sardar Finesse. Um, so there's my Tarkin's Orders. I don't know what does that zoom in, zoom out a couple times. Um, I capture Solo. I draw U3PO, and again, now I'm starting to feel even better, because now I'm like, okay, I can just have U3PO block. You, between a combination of U3PO and Tarkin's orders, I can really mitigate some damage, and Erica as well, to retrieve some. So I just gotta hope he doesn't have this happen, where <laughs> he's got Hera, um, and luckily Johto's got that sweet game tax where he can cancel if he draws more than one. So he draws the five, and I can cancel the second one. So now I, I can't lose Johto and allow Luke to... I don't have like an escape route here. I don't have Gick. I don't have a Dobri combo. I have to avoid getting a beat down here. So I just lose Erica. Um, and now it's again really tight. So I only have seven. He's got nine. He's probably wondering why didn't you concede like four turns ago? Um, you know, I'm moving Prophecy of the Force. I just get Pro Probot down just because he's a body. I need some body there to get me a Destiny, to soak up some Forfeit. And make sure I don't let Luke get released, because um, that's going to be a problem. So now again, he's now pressed with some decisions of, do I put a dude down or do I pay to drain? Um, and and this is an interesting thing. This was part of the errata with like my father. <clears throat> His battle destinies are plus one, um, and he can still put the card down to get extra force, um, even while Luke's a captive. That didn't used to be the case. Um, back when you could put this on the table, even without an indoor site on table. So that was something that came into play a handful of times in this game. Um, yeah, so he does do the, the drain. I'm going to play Tarkin's Orders, and now he's probably, again, kicking himself for why did I grab Dobreed when these Tarkin's Orders and Voyeur are, like, <laughs> some of the best things I have going for me right now. Um, and I'm going to use Mitt to try to make sure, you know, he, he eats the ping here to move in front of me. And I think... This might have been the turn... So there's a couple of decisions I'm presented with here. When, when do I just throw <clears throat> Afra to the JCC and hope that I don't get, you know, beat down and overflowed? How many more characters could he have left? You know, I don't want... If he's got a Lando or somebody else, he can just throw against Chelly 
yeah, that could be a good game right there. But I think what, in retrospect, I need to just take the risk here. I think I need to just be like, look, I need a lot of things for me to go right still, even though I do have some things in my direction. I only have so much force left. Um, I probably need to take the risk of this turn to put Shelly down. And I probably should have swapped IG-88 and mid, um, because then I got, mid can actually do drains then. He could still use his text. IG-88 being a Black Sun agent um, would... <clears throat> make this still a battleground. Um, whereas he can't really do anything when he's by himself. So those are a couple of things when I look back, I'm like, yeah, I should have probably done this and that. And I'm sure, and obviously there's plenty of things that Kyle was thinking the same thing with, of, oh, I should have done this or I should have done that. Um, but I can keep getting these pings through with the Shadows draw. I get Tarkin's orders, which is great. I, I think this maybe was the turn where I just throw Chelly to the JCC, spend two force to swap, to put Mitt here, IG-8 up here, and then spend my last force to put Emperor back in the sewers. And then if he wants to keep chasing me around with Ray, at least I can get the mid pings through. And yeah, I'm just afraid, like, yeah, this was way too conservative that he's got, like, a Lando, or, you know, not really afraid of, like, an Obi-Wan, because he won't have all the force to, like, swing and draw. But he doesn't have to overflow me by much just to, to make it work, so... I just move Emperor away. I save the force and figure I leave IG-8 here. But that's the other thing, too, is I'm kind of giving up the opportunity to take advantage of Prophecy. I, I might have been able to do that. Um, I definitely would have been able to predict where he'd move with Mitt then because he would have just kept chasing around wherever the Prophecy was with Emperor or where I could have possibly done. So he did have Lando, so it's actually a good thing that I didn't put Shelly there. I would have lost. So, yeah, I mean, maybe I knew that, but probably not. Probably I was just being conservative. So Lando draws a 1. You know, Lando's going to draw another Destiny. But Jodo, again, comes in big to be able to cancel it. Um, so he's only going to draw a Destiny of 2 because he gets the plus 1. I draw a 4, so I'm going to have to stack, which which stinks for me. Um, and i got to lose Probot again because I just can't let Luke escape. He make the decision of whether he lets him uh, rally or, uh, or escape to the site. So I have to lose Probot. And then again, I'm in this situation where... Like, I'm just praying that Yoda doesn't overflow my, my guy Jodo here. This would have been a good game to have Decree out. That came in handy. Um, I think one of my wins this month where I had Decree late <clears throat> and getting that Destiny. So I'm now down to one card face down. This must be the end. I turn 11. <clears throat> so I activate one. I don't... I can't move any... I can't move anybody anywhere. Um, but I can throw Chelly out, get a Retrieval... And then I could just pray, which is what I do, that he doesn't overflow me too bad and I get another turn out of it. Because um, I think what happens is he overflows me exactly by four. Let me speed this up as I'm spoiling it. So again, more damage. Um, I think I lost track of my Voyeur. Maybe I just top decked it or maybe I was just too constrained by, by everything else at the game. But I'm down to one. He's down to six. <clears throat> he doesn't drain. He's probably figuring about he could just KO me. So I'm gonna have to stack with conflict. I gotta peel four. And he allows smartly. I would have been tempted maybe in the moment, but he allows Luke to escape. Just to get that force back. Yeah. Or two force back. So that's huge too. And I don't know if that's something that I think maybe I didn't put two and two together with that, just assumed he'd allow him. Because I might have actually been able to pull out the win then. Um so I I just have to get him under Three. If I get him out of two force, I just win. Um, because he's not going to be able to pay for drains, as long as I can run away. Um, so that, that sending Luke to use was was huge. And he's going to end up winning this by three. And it, it was a really, really good game. I think our timers were pretty low. You know, relative, not like Paul Myers low. Like, <clears throat> I think we had... I might have, I might have actually had like eight minutes left. Um, but, it, but it was a really tight game, a lot of decisions. And, uh, and yeah, so that was my first game. So let me bounce out of here. I'm not going at a great pace right now, so... I don't want this to be like three hours. I definitely don't want it to be even two. Um, so that was my first loss. Second loss to Ashinolo. So this is Chad, um, Ohio guy. Um, hopefully you guys can see the pretty sweet Star Killer base background. Um, <clears throat> this is better to do with both guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because then I would have lost the third battleground, right? Yeah, and then I would have lost resistance. Um, so. Chad is a he, he played a little bit during Legacy. I think he came back to the game in the last year or two. <clears throat> and he really likes Tig and I think Throne Room. 
Um, and TIG is straight up the worst matchup for agents. It really is. And that's what, going back to the NPC again, um, Matt Wadden in our bracket, I was in the bracket with Eric and Desai and Tom Heed and Charlie and me. And, and I, I've said this a couple of times, but like one through six in that bracket, everyone played agents. Um, first, the top, I think uh, Kessling was the seven seed, which seems kind of crazy thinking about that, that he's a seven because Kessling's a good player, but he played court. Um, so it was a really good meta call, and he did really well. He knocked out Eric, he knocked out uh, Desai, um, he knocked out Hade. Um, so so there's just a bunch of things that we'll see that Tig, there's good in him, does well against agents. Um, obviously, there's very few Imperials. I only have Mitt and Erica and the Emperor who can actually capture Luke. Um, but we actually played this matchup in an open uh, game. I think I won narrowly. And like I said, so Chad, he, he's getting good, though. Um, he almost beat uh, Jared Konsker in the Gem PC in the first round. Um, he, he uh, Jared advanced on Lost Piles, so, you know, um, and he's very comfortable with this TIG deck. Um, so I'm fortunate to get to Kree out. This is helpful because if I do need to capture Luke with one of my Imperials, I can at least reduce the drain to one. I'll speed this up as just set up. I, I don't really have much fear in this about putting out my locations. Maybe I should. But I think I made a conscious decision of like, look, I either gotta, you know, go all in and get all the sites out, or hold them back. Um, so I get them all out. The, some of the things that obviously that Tig does well, it has, it can play senses, um, which you know I have a couple senses, but you know you don't want to see them on the other side. Um, it can play a neighboring early in the game to get Luke over and, and kick some butt. Um, and with the twelve card, he's you know pretty early in the game, he's got resources to just keep. Uh, throwing at Chizor and, and try to get rid of him for good. Um, it's also a good shield busting deck. It used to be even better with the old Luke, the old uh, Luke Skywalker Rabbi Scout, because he could retrieve one alone. So like conceivably, Dark Side could pull, you know, Secret Plans, Battle Order, Coward, Sense Shield. Like it can pull a lot of grabber. It can pull all the shields really fast. Um, now that's one less thing, one less item that has to worry about. So Chad puts out uh, Battle Planes, which you know you don't always see. Usually that's a location that Lightside doesn't want to put out until it can defend it, but he probably does what I kind of did of, well, let me just get everything out and have lots of force to work with. Um, I pulled Coward to stop the strain of one. Maybe not my best decision. Uh, maybe I should have just... But again, I don't want to pull Battle Order because I like to have it floating. Um, so I kind of picked the... Maybe I should have... Uh, I don't know. I, I like it when Lightside pulls Battle Plan, though, because if they're mains, at least, because usually I'm the one who has Battle Plan late in the game, and I'm fairly certain that's what happens here. So I have my Sheezer's Bounty in hand. I have Emperor. He did not pull Professor, or a Goldenrod, rather. Um, but like I talked about the first game, you know, sometimes I just make a conscious decision. So I just throw Emperor out, move, you know, do it some on three Battlegrounds to get a ping through, happily, you know, spend one extra force to move, to consolidate, to cause a force loss. Um, we're both activating a ton. He's got battle plans, so he's probably gonna just keep chipping away with drains of two. Um, I kinda like my hand here, because I have Aura, and I have Cad, and I have Forlom, who are three good characters to attack Luke. Um, I have an imbalance combo for a mess. I have a gig for worst case scenario. So I'm kinda thinking, oh, maybe I can just go attack Luke and kill him. Um, he comes at my guys here with Ray. I'm going to hit her with a Sheezer's Bounty and hope that he doesn't have, like, EPP Obi or another weapon. Um, and he doesn't, so he's going to put Dash out, who <laughs> works well against me here because he makes this so that it's not a four strain minus one. It's Chewie, Leia, or Dash. Very thematic with the Shadows of the Empire book, which I read about a month ago for the first time in, like, 20 years. Um, so I draw a little bit, um, or I draw with Shadows. So again, I and Dilbreed's a good card to have here. Um... In case I do get hit, and I'm gonna pull Monarch. Um, he's at 12 cards in hand, so you know he knows that. I'm not surprising him, so he's gonna play around it the rest of the game. Um, he's just having Yoda here babysitting the Jedi Council Chamber, you know, maybe waiting to zap him somewhere um, as he pleases. I also realizing Chad likes the foils, which is which is cool. I'm a big fan of foils on Jump too, so he's got a lot. Um, so that's that's cool. We got a lot of shiny stuff on this table. Um, I'm going to go for a verify. <clears throat> I don't want to pay three to drain one. I would like to get set up in space. Um, 
especially because I have uh, Feynman's Fist in my hand. I play Force Push. I went to Ricardo's Isle looking for Erica. Now, this is where I, I make a, a non good play. Like, <clears throat> I could. I think I was, I was afraid to eat two drains at two. Um, so I figured, let me just go take Luke and I can reduce. Um, yeah, I did that little crazy zoom thing. Oh, we're zoomed in on Luke's face. That's so weird. Uh oh. <laughs> let's see here. <laughs> That's really funny. Here, let's try this. Let me switch up the, we switch up the table texture. Okay. I don't know if that's just a rendering bug or whatever the heck uh, what the terminology of it is, but it kind of bounces in and out like that. So I got Phalanx Fist out, so I'm going to be on three battlegrounds when I shuttle up just a Vigo. Um, I look at the top card, so I know I have a 136. I have U3PO, who's a guy who I want to get into my hand. Um, and I guess at this point is when I do the Shadows Draw. <clears throat> yep, calls another ping, and that's really nice that I have the barrier. So now I'm like, okay, if he has like Han Chewie the Falcon, I'm okay at Coruscant. And this is where it's like, what was my end game here with Erica? It's like, did I really think, and I, he has 12 cards in his hand. He definitely has like an EPP Obi, a Lando, and like a Hera, or somebody good. So I'm like, I guess I'm thinking to myself, all right, let me at least force him to go to a, a non battleground where General Leia won't retrieve. Um, <clears throat> where like if he puts Draw the Fire out, at least he won't retrieve. At least I'm threatening like a drain of two instead of a drain of one, I guess was my, um, yeah, yeah, it was actually really good. And I'm kind of realizing a lot of the reflections to cards and how they come into play and a lot of the shadow stuff. Um, so I bought it a while ago. I think I needed to get like over a certain number on, uh, Amazon Eric just to get free shipping. Um, and then like a while ago before prime really. Um, so I just had it sitting and I was like, yeah, you know, I'm playing lots of clicks on, maybe I should read this. Um, so, all right, so it is the start of his turn three. <clears throat> He's got plenty of force to work with. He's going to pay to drain the two. Pretty pretty nice. I wonder what his uh, reasoning with using uh, dash virtual is. Um, obviously, he's really good against... <laughs> Another reason why this take is good against my Black Sun, because he, he does the subtract thing against gangsters, EPPs, or, you know, both at Bounty Hunter. Um, so this was really smart of him. He put Obi-Wan down first to draw up my barrier. And then he's going to put Hanshi with the Falcon up here. And now I'm like, oh crap, this isn't good. <clears throat> and, uh, and again, so I'm hoping, like, like I said, Matt Sokol plays that Princess Leia V. And I think, you know, Justin Mayashiro says he likes uh, that version of Leia a lot too. That can be really be a powerful um, space package. And he draws a six for the Power Destiny. Um, and a five, so this this is bad news for me because I can't lose the system. If I lose the system, that's one of my best advantages against main. So I'm lucky to draw a six. So I'm only gonna have to peel a couple. I am immune because this thing's immune less than eight. But I got a stack, which I guess I throw, I don't know what I threw over there from reserve deck. I really like every card in my hand, I guess. I lose Vigo and I gotta peel three. And this isn't looking good because uh, now I lose, this is no longer a battleground. So I have to pay to drain. Um, I do have a escape route here with Erica, but, you know, he's activating a ton. He's going to have a nice full hand of 12 cards again, and he's just going to keep coming at me, and I now don't have my barrier, and I don't have my Sheezer's Bounty, um, so I'm kind of, I'm vulnerable now on the ground. Um, I was really fortunate to draw that six. Um, man, he's got a lot of foils, unless it's something like the interface, but <laughs> look at the whole reserve deck. Uh, but I guess he does say he, he this is like his favorite deck, so maybe he's kind of concentrated a lot of his uh, his jump gold, which, quick plug for that is, there's now capabilities to give out jump gold, give out jump packs, give out exclusive shout out to Adam Fletcher, who's been working on, available soon. They're going to be used for a lot of the majors this year and online events. Uh, GIMP AI virtual packs. So they're going to be packs of four AIs um, of virtual cards. So there's about maybe 40 official ones, and there's going to be a couple series. So the first series is going to be picking from 26 possible AIs, or maybe it's 21, 21 or 26. And those are going to be cool. So look out for them. They're going to be used for the retro event. They're going to be used for the Gen PC. And actually, frankly, once those are, as soon as they're capable and operationalized, we can start giving them out for all the Gen PC people because it's just every participant is going to get one. Um, and we can give it out for future events. So look out for that. Um, quick plug for the retro event. 
Um, I'm running that. It's just, it's if you want to get all the details, tinyurl.com slash retro 2021. It's on the it's on the scroll here. So if you're interested in old school formats, uh, Premiere Death Star 2, that's going to start April 1st, 10 game OCS style event, cut to top four, maybe even top eight. So sign up for that. It's as he drains me now, or I drain now that I got the fist at least. So that made sense to pay for three to get a drain of two. I need to get a Black Sun agent. These other ones I want to hold. I want R for the ground. I want Chelly for late game, you know, to find my U3PO if I need to. I want CAD for the ground. Um, so Zam, even though she draws on her own, it's kind of a nice card to have. Um, you know, I, I do need to turn on battle or satisfy battle plan and make sure that I uh, was at the system. So now I got Aura, and I guess I don't have battle order out. Um, I'm going to cancel Obi's text, but, or at least try to. Does he have deflection? Um, no. So... I guess I was trying to go for a beat here. Um, I think I knew he had a Hoodix, or maybe just strongly suspected it. Um, I'm gonna hit Obi. <laughs> he gets the bullet hole for the blaster. And you get the slices for the lightsaber. That's a new animation. Um, I draw a four for Battle Destiny. Let me speed this up. He draws a five. And uh, so I'm just gonna lose Aura. Oh, he did not have a Hujik. So that was actually kind of a good move. I could see the top of my reserve deck, so now I know I can find my U3PO. He just had a peel four. That's not too bad. And now I'm feeling better, even though he's up a little bit. Um, I have eight versus nine, same amount of cards in hand. He's got, you know, six, seven more, but I, I have better board control right now. Um, so now I'm feeling okay. Um, but I think there's a bad turn or two coming up. So now I definitely want to get U3PO in my hand. I've grabbed my Force Lightning. Again, one of the things I like about Black Sun, you just kind of keep cycling cards and get the cards you need, and you know where cards are at, hopefully. Um, so he comes down with Kui. Probably the one guy I don't want him to have is, is Qui-Gon. I don't know why I call him Kui. Um, he hits Erika, which is going to free Luke. Um, he only draws a 1, but he has Jedi Lev. There's the Hujiks. I draw a 6. Um, he just loses Qui-Gon, and Forlom is the lone survivor from my squad over here. Um, and now he's going to move Luke out to a battleground. He's going to flip me back. And now he's in decent shape here. To again, force drain. Force damage of four. Um, where I'm only doing, let's see, one, two, three. I can draw for four. So we're kind of even, but he's up in life force. But I don't have to pay for battle plan. Now he grabs the Hujix. Um, you know, just kind of chipping away here. I get you through view out. Okay, obviously nice to... I have imbalance to protect against her at the mess, so I'm shutting down this damage. Just I think I tracked a six here, so I know CAD. I have the Gick for worst case scenario. So I'm gonna break Luke's immunity. And he plays a second Luke, which I think a lot of Tigs do. They usually just float a, a Jedi Knight um, in case the Luke does get killed by like an alien deck. Um, I see that draw their fires in his reserve deck. Draw a few cards. Tarkin's order is nice. Barrier. So so now I'm doing I'm feeling okay now. He is, he's threatening no damage. I'm threatening, you know, a few. I got some evasion. I got some mitigation. I got some protection with... Um, yeah, like, so I'm going to grab it and cancel it. I just don't like when this card gets recurred. I'm sorry about the mess. Combo gets recurred. But now he gets corn Horn out. So yeah, I guess maybe that's his plan B. <laughs> Luke comes back out. He, he flips me. And now he's got the upper hand again. So this is like a seesaw match. Um... He breaks the cover. I'd much. It almost would have been better if he if I let. I maybe I should have let him kill. <laughs> in retrospect, if I knew he had corn horn, if I, because uh, then I could have just Chelly used Chelly to retrieve U three PO. Um, so he's now in commanding position. I need to you know switch things. I know I have a six on top. I'm just gonna throw Chelly and go for IG eighty eight. And I guess I go to capture Luke here. Or no, I could pop to Kree, draw the six. He's only immune less than five, or six because he's alone, but he doesn't have a lightsaber. Um, he draws a six, so I'm going to need to stack, but I'm not going to take any overflow. Um, so I kill his second Luke. Um, so that's good. And I flip back, so now I'm threat. I, I probably should maybe spread out Shizor and Emperor. Um, but maybe I just wanted to play it safe. I just figured I'd just hold my gick here for Chelly. Um, so I split Emperor and Shizor. I could you know, do two direct damage with my objective. I'm only down to 10 life force. 
He's got another EPP OB. I'm going to barrier. He's got the sense. I got the sense. He never pulled. He should have pulled wise advice. That was a misplay by him. Um, and But he does have general light here. He's not able to retrieve because she's not at a battleground. I don't. It would have been really good if I could have drawn a four. Because this, when she kind of camps out here, um, that comes into play late because it gets to be a close game. So I'm on 2x here. Let me speed up even more. Um, so now I know he has a Hujix. And I have hidden weapons. Okay, cool. Um, I wonder what my plan becomes here. Because I have Boba Fett. Uh, it doesn't have perimeter scan, so that's cool. Go to battle here. Um, yeah, I don't want him to hit She's or, or Emperor, to be frank. So I just draw the six and immediately make Obi die. So that's cool. Um, I'm on three battlegrounds. I probably should have moved, or maybe do I? Maybe I do that backup Chelly, so then I don't have to rely on the Gick to make her live. Um, and <laughs> I thought about it. So that's cool that uh, that gem shows that I should have done something to back her up because you know I, I shouldn't rely on the Gick and his four life force are getting low. He's not going to be able to draw. Um, he's not going to be able to get damage through. Well, now he's not even forcing any damage, but um, he, he's starting to have to make tough decisions about whether to damage, what to deploy, you know, how much force to leave for Destiny, all that. Um, he's getting damaged. That's right. He already broke you through because cover, duh. But I have Tarkin's orders. So now I'm feeling pretty good again. Um, again, in the Seesaw match, he smartly grabs it. And now I'm probably thinking to myself, I need to find Voyeur. I probably top decked it, or I just completely lost track of it. Anakin comes down, and I'm gonna have to burn. I'm gonna have to burn um, my kick here and stack a card, um, which are not ideal. If I just move Fett over here, he couldn't have done this play. He wouldn't be able to attack Shizor. He wouldn't have been able to attack them because I would have got two Battle Destiny and had a lot more power. That was a big misplay. I, I should have, you know, anticipated him having another character. Yoda zaps over here. And now he's threatening damage of 2-2-1, two, two, even though he's going to pay 9, but I don't have a ton of life force left, so that'd be worth it to him. I'm going to drain for 2, drain for 1. Uh, you know, I want to shadows a card, so I'm going to put Aura down. You know, Fett's going to die now, but I think he kind of served his purpose. He's getting pretty low on life force. I just had to move Aura around. I think maybe because my destiny sucked. Um, maybe that's what I saw. Kind of going too fast here, but... Um, now he could pay the full nine. Um, do I? Yeah, that's not good. I got two sixes in my force pile. So now he's got to peel a bunch. I lost track of my Tarkin's orders. Or, I, or no, he grabbed it. Duh. Um, so now this is going to get tight. Um, I need to get him under to make him pay for battle plan. Um, he's going to try to do this thing where he traps Emperor. Fortunately, I have IGD-8. Um, to try to maybe knock off Anakin, which is maybe what I do. Um, but I'm only doing I'm doing minimal damage now. Um, I'm just gonna battle here. Maybe figuring I don't really have much of an option. This is going really fast. Um, he kills Shizor, which that's not good. I probably should have just ran away. Um, maybe I'm playing to sewers and back, but I just don't have the force to do all that stuff. So I think I just really needed to keep Shizor alive. Um, he moved some dudes around, but it, I, I didn't have a choice, I guess. I couldn't have moved Emperor anywhere. Um, so at least if I, I don't know, maybe I should have just punted Emperor. Some non-ideal lines of play here. Um, and I think this is going to kind of triple the end here. I'll put it on 3x. He, he, I think he just has just enough just to keep getting drains through, and I, I don't have any more options, so... Um, I'm going to lose another. I'm going to use this, I'm going to lose another close one here. Yeah, I just don't have enough to get him under, and I can only do minimal damage. So I get Sheezer out. I wonder. All right, just to block the drain. He can't draw Destiny. I don't really have much fear about Corrin battling me, but if he draw, yeah, if he pay, yeah, he pays the drain the once, and I only have one battle Destiny to draw. I, I make a good play, and I don't draw. Yeah, against uh. Anakin, because I need to save it to make sure that Corn doesn't for force some battle damage. But I, I can see it here when I only have one left, and I'm not going to be able to win. So, alright, so that's game two.
not going at a great pace. We're at hour two. All right, I forgot the pace here. I don't want this to be super long. Um, all right, so game three. This is against Mr. Dylan uh, Timo. He was the guest this week on Holly Theater. Really good interview with Dan and Timo. So I recommend everyone watch that. Um, really interesting stuff. And you know, he only started playing about a year and a half ago, middle of 19, and he's gotten really good really fast. Um, definitely very comfortable playing this Entanglements deck. And uh, he plays Watto pretty well, too. And this, some play my, 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 my love, my profit here, <laughs> um, was kind of, there's like five late side decks I kind of liked and would have been comfortable with, but I just kind of, yeah, let me try this. Um, against Entanglements, it can be kind of tricky. Um, Timo usually plays his Entanglements really aggressively, and it's really hard to beat. I've had some really bad experiences where like he just flips his Occupation going, and, and like I just concede on turn two. Um, this game he didn't, um, but the Prophet has extra Tatooine sites to help flip back and make sure that it, it's not losing to Occupation, but um, you know it also relies a lot on weapons and with walkers you can't you know use lightsabers to cut up cut up guys. Um, so he does like the, the trademark turn one every single turn one with entanglements is the same. You know he gets justice out, he gets deployment out. Um, he does the Tempest Scout five, pee it. Um, you name it. So, he, uh, um, my hand isn't bad. I got Chewy. I, I really want to get General Leia because she suspends, um, battle deployment, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Um, I draw Luke Saber, which isn't great. I draw the Antichamber. I draw a handful of cards that, you know, maybe two or three cards that I normally, uh, would be able to pull. So that's never good. Usually you want to <laughs> have cards you can't pull. And I get three PO out. I guess I activated the farm, or yeah. So I didn't put the farm out, which sets my activation back a little bit. Um, but I want to get three PO. It's always kind of tricky with the timing here because I want to. I don't want to leave three PO outside because he can get trampled. Um, but with Underworld, you're looking for a couple cards. You don't want to whiff on your rendezvous point on Tatooine. Um, I should have just cycled the Neighborin. The Rendezvous Point Tatooine is even more useless. The Neighborin is a small, small chance it has some value. But I shouldn't have put down Rendezvous Point with 3PO. But that's a minor thing. So I have my leadership, which I'm going to use to find Leia. Because she's really important. Because not only because I get her Leia's blaster rifle out, but she can suspend uh, the Admiral's Order when she's out of Battleground. You know, he's getting all his dudes out. He's flipping. He's got enforcement. This is looking pretty good for him. Where you know, fortunately, he doesn't have occupation out. Um, this entire game, spoiler, I, I didn't lose a single force to imperial or uh, to Tatooine occupation, which is pretty wild. And I still lost. I think it ended up being like a dozen or so. Um, he's got there's no try. He's managing his shields pretty well. He grabs leadership, which is something I don't really mind. Um, I have more annoying interrupts, so I have Leia here. And I kind of think, hey, I don't make cards my walls pile. Let me just try to pick them off a couple places. Um, and, you know, maybe try to wear them down until I get some cards that I need to lose and retrieve. I don't want to flip too early. But I might have been able to play a game in, of this matchup of just trying to match him. Find my Ender Celebration, a free ride to cancel stuff. He reacts. Um, but yes, yeah, so I, I just want to keep battling. And with Leia suspending it, I have Skywalkers to add a couple... Um, but he has justice out, so that's not going to work. I kind of maybe I take the approach of just trying to burn through his justice cards. Um, I'm able to blow away Tempest Scout Five. I think I did. I use the mess to make sure of it. No, I held it. Just kind of cross my fingers. So I know where the free drive combo is, um, so I can track that around. The same with it could be worse. So I think in this battle there might have been two or three or maybe even four cards that I'm like, oh, I, I want to know where those are for three PL so I can find them if I need them. So that was kind of fortunate. I just basically burned BB-8 just to get some more cards in my use pile. Because I had two poles and I wanted some more. You know, maybe I had a little more force than I needed to do with. But in retrospect, yeah, that might have been a little short-sighted. Maybe it would have been better just to have a couple extra force. Um, so he does not use Justice, which is... I, I hate this, that when Justice goes out and... I mean, it's part of the game, but he can use it offensively or defensively as he wants it. Um, or he, he, can be, he can draw multiple battle destinies when he wants to. And he can cap when he wants to. I mean, it's like 
something like uh, No Idea will use evac control, but I don't think it rarely wants to draw more than one battle destiny. Um, it's usually strictly a defensive. Uh, the, the approach towards multiple battle destinies is strictly defensive and No Idea, put it that way. Um, you know, I don't even use Hera. You know, she kind of contradicts evac control because she can't do the redraw. If she she can't add a battle destiny if you use evac control to pluck a card off. Um, so so there's some kind of uh, what's the opposite of synergy. So he's gonna keep chipping away. I'm gonna get some cards in my lost pile here. Um, let's speed this up. Um, I lay his gun. I have the force to use it. I save an extra force in case he plays. I can't shake him. And force me to use an extra force. He's gonna come down with a couple dudes. Tarkin's trouble. Um, I'm gonna blow away Tarkin. But I think what happens here is I end up peeling a bunch. I don't have a Hujik, so I did all that without. You know, I draw the one, which is crushing. If I could have drawn a little bit more, you know, I'm peeling six here. If I could have drawn like a four or five, it wouldn't have been nearly as bad. So, so this really sets me back. Um, now I got a lost pile of 13. Now I got more cards in my lost pile than I want. He's got, we got the same amount of cards face down. I have one more card in hand. So I'm like kind of bummed, but I'm also like, all right, he's got board control, but our life force are pretty equal. Let me, um, let me kind of do maybe what I should have done at the beginning and just try to get my stuff set up. Um, and I'm going to flip him back a bunch of times in this game. Um, so I get Anakin out. This is where I, this is another misplay in the month. Like, I got a little cocky here. I should have put Anakin with Han and made sure that I had some type of, you know, disincentive for him to attack me at the audience chamber. As it is now, what he's going to do this turn, he comes down with a bunch of dudes, draws three battle destiny, and kills all my guys. <laughs> um, so at least if I had Anakin, I could have at least hit somebody. Had some more forfeit to soak up just to make sure Han survives. Um, you know, he's not going to have a lot of weapons in this. Maybe he's got a Mara, but that's about it. Um, and I, like, what am I doing? I'm just threatening this drain at two. I, I would have been better off just putting it here because I'm not going to pay three to drain one at the audience chamber. He's. Is, does he shield bust? I wonder what happens here with battle plan. Um, he definitely pulls it at some point. Um, but yeah, so this is bad. He draws just enough to cause me to lose three key people here. So now I lose Han, I don't get the ping, I can't force drain. That was not a good move by me. I should not have put Anakin over here. That did not make a lot of sense. He was probably pretty happy about that. Um, so now I have Luke, Lando, Leia, draw their fire, and Skywalkers. But Skywalkers is kind of useless because he's got justice. And unless I can find General Leia, which I think I make it like a chore to find her. Because um, I really want to suspend battle deployment. I think at this point I make the decision of, look, I'm not going to be able to out damage him. I need to get a big battle through. But he still hasn't plucked a single card off Justice. This is, and now I'm on tilt. So I'm on tilt because I'm kicking myself the Anakin. I grab Leia, I guess maybe with the Luke pull. Um, I put Leia down, or the other Leia down. And like, what am I thinking here? Like, he's just gonna grab a card off Justice. It's gonna be, there's no way. He gets a free react. I, I had the chance to grab a sense, but I didn't. Um, he tramples Chewie, he kills Chewie. Or he goes for Lando, fortunately. But, yeah, I put your other fire down, I'm not going to be able to pay it to retrieve with secret plans. And I can't retrieve with Leia. He reacts. At least I cause him to flip back. But, like, th th this was not good. Um, so this play is probably when I lost the game. And then I'm going to speed this up and we'll go really fast. Because it kind of, just kind of crawls to the end. I flip him back a couple times. I get some damage through. I have a couple glimmers of hope. It's a couple points. Um, like I said, I never lose, he never gets occupation to stick. Um, and he just never picks a battle that doesn't make sense. So he plays it very well. He gets battle order out, even though I can't even drain right now. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going to glide to the finish line here. So one of the cool things I always about the new interface is we can jump around. So this is telling me activate turn five. Let's go. Let's speed ahead a couple turns. So this is like two or three turns ahead. This is the, uh, ch -ch 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 speeding up he gets thrown out basically he just keeps plucking off my guys because he draws like two battle destiny when he wants to or caps me when he wants to um, and I just have a never happen I never have an opportunity to break three I'm able to get Han back um, but he's gonna keep retrieving with enforcement he's gonna retrieve with my draw their fire he's gonna retrieve with his objective uh, biker scouts 
and uh, this was probably the least close of my five losses this month. Maybe maybe the one against Nick. Oh. I'll speed ahead here to turn nine. I, I draw this out. He's probably like, dude, you should just concede. Yeah, he gets a bunch of guys down there, draws through Destiny. Yeah, that was before. Um, he smartly just never leaves anybody out to dry. He makes sure he always has force to react. I get him down here to nine. Oh, I guess he was a little closer than I thought. Um, let me speed this up. Okay, I, I'm, this is the kind of your conundrum with Leia that you don't want to flip her on the drain of one, but he just burned through the drain of ones, didn't let me ever cancel the drain of two. Um, he's going to, yeah, force push Leia out, and then I'm like, all right, Chewie's going to overflow here. This isn't going to work. So I got him at a 10. Yeah, it may look close. I kind of thought it was like 15. But yeah, so a couple bad misplays, not thinking, kicking myself. He played it very well. Um, I, uh, yeah, actually, real quick, just curious. Any, any interesting games going on? No. No OCS, no Gen PC. All right, so that's the third one. Let's go to the fourth of the five. This was, uh, let's see. Against yeah, Nick Reich, Aeneas. So, fun fact. I think I've played him the second most of any person. I played Brenson the most, um, but I haven't played Brenson in a while, like maybe a full year. He hasn't been as active. Um, let's go back to Star Killer Base. So, so yeah, so Nick Rice top sixteen last year. He he won, uh, qualified in I think July. Um, and why is it this starting? I think I played him like 14 or 15 times. Um, I switched up the decks. I wanted to play a little Y4 Ops. He played Rops V, which you don't see very often nowadays. Um, and this one isn't the most exciting one. He knows my deck. We've played a bunch of times. Um, I don't know what's going on in the middle of the screen here, but um, he smartly gets... He does, he does a lot of really good things this game. He gets you Sana out early, which prevents me from getting the Donna out because I have like barely any ground in this deck. Um, so that's going to prevent me from adding one to each of my liberation draws. And it's also going to <laughs> make this site a liability. Um, there are a lot of opportunities for him to pay three to drain one early in this game, and he doesn't do it. And it really pays off because he's able to just set up as he wishes and find the cards he needs to find. Um, so, you know, Yon for Operations, um, this is basically... Usually a pretty heavy space deck. It can be balanced. I've, I've tried a couple couple versions of it balanced. I, I, I think it's really tough to thread the needle of being competent enough on the ground and also being able to kind of do what you want in space of liberating and getting drains through and you know having strong ships that have staying power, especially snub fighters, because they're the ones that tie in with Restore Freedom of the Galaxy. Um, I get Hobby out. I got Luke. I got two... Ra this is one of the few games that I have, like... Usually... A lot of times I'm like, darn, I need to get that um, weapon out. And this game I just had no problem finding. Although there was one point where I wanted to get the X-Wing cannon, and of course I couldn't find it. So so again, he's very methodical here. He's setting up. Um, I whiff. He plays a dark time at one point. I don't grab it because I'm thinking, I saw Voyeur. Or I see Voyeur in his lost pile. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, that's going to be the card I grab. Um, and then eventually I don't grab a dark time. Then I do. Then he does start cycling Voyeur late and hit me with that. Um, he's mostly up, you know, now with Rops, this is a drain zero, unless I liberate it, I gotta pay three in order to do that because of battle order. I'm just not able to get a lot of damage through. And he has, you know, he, I played him once and he put a Star Destroyer out and like he just wisely like didn't let me take advantage of that with Tarn, with weapons, with hitting him, with hitting his ships. And he's got Search and Destroy, which is, frankly, the last card I want to see as Yavin 4 base operations. That That's the card I hate seeing. To the point where I even debate about running an altar with Luke and trying to track around a low destiny, because that card just kills. You know, this card, can, the Y4 Ops can retrieve, get some damage there usually. But if it's eaten two force loss every cycle, that makes it really tough. Um, So even though I capped this here, I have the opportunity to get Honor, but I don't think another Jedi is going to hold here. He's going to be able to get on three Battlegrounds. So yeah, this is where he plays a Dark Time. I neglect to draw. 
or to grab it rather, maybe a case to have another grabber in here. Um, and we got Luke out. I, I spread it because I don't want him to be able to get to any of the sites. I want him to make sure I want to make sure he pays for battle order the whole game. Get my second. I find my second projection, which is good. Of Skywalker. I, I just if he comes, I think he comes out with two starfighters, which are trouble because then I really want to get the X Wing cannon. And I have two rapid fires, um, but if the X Wing cannon, if it's in my force pile, that's a problem. So he comes out here. I think I'm gonna cross my fingers that he doesn't battle. <clears throat> it probably would have been better if he did, um, because like he just has the ability to draw a bunch of destiny. Uh, where's his his power is eleven. He can get three battle destiny between Tarkin adds with Ozil. And what am I missing? Maybe maybe I'm thinking of something else when he gets to three destiny. But you know he wisely lets me. He doesn't want to battle and get counter beat. Um, so let me speed this up. He, he's pretty much in control of this whole game. There's there's one point where I'm like, oh, maybe I can win this. Um, but but not quite. So again, so I whiff here on a liberation. So it's just a drain of one. I whiff. Oh, no, I hit artillery. Okay. So then I get him to stack a card, and I actually get a drain of one through. I get Tarn out. I get projection out. Yes, I think I'm feeling pretty good here. But he, again, he, he knows I like Tarn. <laughs> so he splits his... his Pilots. He doesn't stack a Star Destroyer, which is like exactly what Tarn wants to happen. Um, and he close calls me, so I don't even get one. So I can't get rid of anything. That's really bad. He draws a five. This is a brutal battle. And I really don't want to lose either of these guys because I kind of want to have Hobby because he works better with the X-Wing cannons. But um, you know, I move Wedge over, and now he's going to start cycling Boyer. And close calls, brutal. I think my deck has three rescue in the clouds. Um, but, you know. A lot of times when people get rescued in the clouds, you just play it to cycle a card, to find the card you want, and you forget that, hey, maybe it makes sense to hold on to this a lot of times. Um, so now he's going to end up getting another site out. He's going to spread so you can get, you know, drains of one, 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 even one here. He's going to keep running in space because there's nothing to gain for him to battle me in space. If he just keeps satisfying battle order, he's going to win a damage race and a retrieval race, to be honest. Um, we could just search and destroy with Voyeur. With these little drains, I'm gonna have to start paying, and that's where I think I just uh, I, I throw in the towel pretty quickly um, after this, because I'm, I'm probably telling myself, "Hey, I'm actually like I have more life force, but it's just I I need him to make a mistake, and he just doesn't. Um, you know, even it could be worse, isn't that good? Because he's just got a lot of little draws, or not little draws, little drains. Um, so we'll take this to the end, but. Yeah, I'm just like peeling. This turn and the next turn are bad because I just... Yeah, this is where he gets the three battle destiny. Even though he doesn't draw super high. Um, you know, he's able to do the voyeur thing again. And even though I draw six, okay, I get to kill Vader. Um, it's just bad news for me because now he's just... He battled on his terms. He made sure that I didn't, you know, cover all three systems. You know, I don't have a spin. It would have been good to have a spin earlier with Hobby. You know, a few maneuvers and spin. That would have been really big. I probably should have prioritized. Maybe that's a misplay. I should have prioritized finding and all wings with Luke. I know he has a barrier here. I don't know what I'm thinking here. I'm probably just on tilt. <laughs> Hoping to hit. It's going to be tough for me to hit. Uh, either of these, of course, I miss. Because this is a, this enhanced is better for capitals. And even though I, would I just draw... I did draw six, it looks like. But whatever, I, I concede. So this is a quick one. So that was game 10. So at this point, I think I'm 7 and 3. No, no, I'm uh, 6 and 5. This is, no, no, 6 and 4, sorry. 6 and 4 going into game 11. And this one, um, <laughs> so this is against Heisenberg, who I beat earlier in the month as light side. I was profit and I beat Hunt Down V. But Heisenberg is playing the infamous Paul Myers Diplo deck. Um, and it's it's a really good deck. <laughs> it, it covers a lot of bases. It's not easy to beat. Um, it's very flexible. And we have a very good close game. Um, so I'll speed this up again. We're at an hour and 22 minutes. Yeah. 
think maybe an hour and a half is where I hope to end. But thanks for again, thanks for everyone for watching. Hopefully this is helpful to helpful and entertaining um, to different different folks. So I'll put this on the PC channel, the YouTube channel afterwards. Um, all right. So we started. I think I whiffed. Yeah, I think I activated um, Shizor's Palace. So this sent me back a turn, which sucks. And actually, given how close this game ends up, that might have been the difference right there alone. I mean, obviously the whole game plays out a little differently. But, you know, little stuff like that, you know, losing a turn of damage, even if it's just a damage of one, can go a long way. He, it takes him a while to get Luke out, which is good for me. Um, I'll, I'll speed this up. Um, He gets celebration, and he even gets—he probably gets celebration out too early, honestly, because now I'm like, well, am I gonna pay to drain? <laughs> Definitely not pay to drain because he's just gonna retrieve it. <clears throat> he gets until he's out. I get some sights out. I'm gonna move over, but this is just not—it's much better if I can get flipped on turn one. Draw a bunch. Now he's gonna hit me for one, one, one. Uh, I think he actually declines to retrieve. He probably figures I'm not going to be able to kick him off of Tatooine, so just wait a turn. He's got the Shuffle now up. He's got Lando Lay. He's got Use Pile Poles. Um, that's good for him. Um, so he's got a whole whole party here, which means I can't really battle into this. He's got to have a Hujix to just be leaving Mr. Uh, Nara over here. Um, I know Paul's deck plays two Hujix combos um, and all these annoying stuff like Old Ben and it's a trap and it, it's really meticulously contrasted because you get these retrievals with Celebration, you get the use pile poles, um, and you just keep cycling the annoying interrupts and you keep cycling your guys. I don't know how he crams it all in there because then he's got Cassian to cancel Destiny but then he's got evac control. I think he plays maybe three Celebrations. Um, so he barriers my uh, Space Cruiser which is big because I might have been able to with the attrition bonus I'm getting on the seven side, you know, really kill both these guys and maybe set them back. Um, so that was a big barrier. I didn't have a sense for it. Um, I think after this game, I, I may have made some changes. So he retrieves a barrier, who takes on all wings. Um, yeah, there's there's one of my senses. Um, so he's all on Tatooine. The one thing is he does start gradually putting more and more cards on the table. Um, but this, this celebration is a problem. And I have this. So obviously I have Masterful Move, but I want to try to bury it. I don't want to just cancel it and have him retrieve it immediately with Walkling or retrieve it with a Leia Battle on his turn. So I want to try to make sure I like strategically can cancel it, bury it, and then just go about my business. But even at that case, he probably has a second one. It probably would have been worth just taking the risk there of, okay, maybe he takes a while because he's, he's going to grab it no matter what. I would think... Anyone playing this deck knows that that's the one card you grab. Oh, he comes out with Cassian. I think he doesn't battle me here, if I'm, if I'm remember right. You know, Cold Feet's a great card in this matchup because it cancels Old Ben. Yeah, he just shuttles up. So he takes the approach, which is smart. I, like, basically, just stack the system. Don't let me take it. Um, and I don't know why he didn't move to and from there. He wouldn't have been able to flip, I guess, maybe. Because you need to be able to control... A battleground site and a battleground system with Diplo after the tapes are delivered. So he's probably waiting for a better opportunity. Um, he could move to my system because this thing's. Or no, or no, I don't think he can. He could. I think what he does is he goes to Alderaan and then to Coruscant. So I P fifty nine out. Um, figure I'm just going to try to pluck him off these locations. Right, battle order. Maybe if he has, like, you know, I probably figure he has at least one. It's a trap. So now I cancel it and try to bury it. Um, you know, destinies are kind of mixed. I'm able to hit. Um, draw my monarch. Power ties. I have to lose Bosk. And then he was very nice. He granted me a revert because I definitely wanted to battle here. And I just trying to account for so many different things. You just and you just click pass. And you're like, oh wait, wait, I did not want to click pass. And then of course, anytime you're doing reverts around a battle phase, it's annoying because it's hard to find the perfect spot. Um, to get to, so you don't have to replay some aspects of it. Um, but yeah, obviously I definitely want to play it. And he probably didn't mind because he's got it to trap, so he just canceled it. So I don't want to leave Dengar out to dry. Um, and I also don't want to let him start shuffling, or at least shuffle me. 
into a problem. I don't have a gick, but I do have a Sheezer's Bounty and a sense as some type of uh, help. So he's going to drain me at the Cantina. Life Force here, you know, we're pretty even, but he's probably got better board control. Um, you know, I'm playing pretty casual over here with, you know, Black Sun Agent in each location. Figuring he's only got a four card hand. Um, yeah, here comes the second celebration. So I got all these guys here. So IJ8 adds Battle Destiny. Johto can cancel a second. And then Mitt has that good text about making ping as he shuffles. Um, but he's just got a whole force here. So he got leadership. He's going to draw three destiny. Um, or not, because I'm going to sense it. Then I'm going to eat the two damage. I just, a bummer here, because I got these guys with low four fifths. And Dengar's four. IG eats three. Johto's three. So, I, 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 and I really need to hold on to battle plan. I think I might have top deck Thalian's Fist, or I can't find it. Um, sometimes I find success versus Diplo, and just like getting Thalian's Fist here. And then eventually getting Java Space Cruiser to Alderaan to threaten. I had another matchup this month against Diplo that went really well. Um, I'm drawing a blank on who it was against. But uh, it... Um, oh, it was Baroni, actually. It was Baroni. And that's what I did in that game. I was able to just go wide here. I got to Alderaan. I'm hitting pings. I think it took him only a little while to get Luke out. And that, that game worked out really well. Um, I think... I mean, I wasn't killing him, but... It got to a point where I probably would. It was evident I was going to win a race. Um, and so now he's got this just loaded tan. If he's going to deliver the tapes and he's going to just take Lando and the droids to Coruscant, which is bad news bears for me. Um, delivers the tapes and then he's going to be able to flip now because he controls a battleground site and battleground system. And now basically the rest of this game is I'm just chipping away a little bit. And I'm just terrified he's going to kick me off of the system. Because if I lose battle plan, I, I probably lose the game. Um, but I am I'm, I'm hitting him for two. I grab the it could be worse. Wait, did I just do that? What did I just... Oh, well, I grabbed it to hit. Yeah, because I don't want him to cancel these drains. Um, although that might not have been the best one. So I bring Erica down. I probably have something good track to kill Leia. Yeah, so that's why I come down with Probot. I really want to get rid of her. So that I don't, you know, it's one less card she can retrieve with Celebration. Prevents her from journey at the Cantina. Prevents me from going into some type of trap where um, I get hit. I'm going to use what I do with Mitt. I accidentally moved him. So I got 636, which is pretty sweet. Um, Erica gets excluded. You know, that's a relatively new animation here where she gets, like, clouded. Really like that. Um, draw my six. Even if I draw three. Actually, that might not have worked. <laughs> Because I don't think he's a Black Sun agent. Um, so I wouldn't have got the attrition bonus, and she would have been immune. Um, so it was good that I had that 2 out of 3 chance. So I get rid of Leia. Let's speed this up. Um, and I mean, yeah, so he's old Benzer anyway. Yeah, so that's where Cold Feet would have been helpful, or second Cold Feet. And I'm in this position where I, I can't let him get 2 Battle Destiny and draw like a 10. Which not even, he wouldn't even have to do. He could draw, he gets a Battle Destiny with somebody. Bail adds... He still has Admiral Radis. He would get plus one, two, three with Diplo. Like, it wouldn't be hard for him to kill Johto, Mitt, and the ship. And then at that point, I'm in trouble. So now I get a little more aggressive over here. I have to put Cat up here. He's in a battle here and retrieve. Um, got this on 3x. I draw six, so this time Leia goes away for good. And at this point, so I'm down. I'm at 13. He's at 20. I have three more cards in hand, so what is that? I'm down like four, but I'm now about to force one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight damage. So that's pretty cool. Um, well, let's talk about this. So now he's going to battle here. He draws well, and I do not. He's fully immune, and I hold him eight in attrition. So again, this is why... You know, I need to just throw guys up here, and I, I think for the rest of this game, I'm just like, I need to find pilots. So I do have Django here, which is good. But what do I do with him? Um, so, he yeah, so has a grab of sense. I'm probably wishing I could find, like, U3PO or find my Voyeur. I think this whole game I don't find Voyeur, so I'm not able to kind of chip away that way. Um, now we're pretty even. So now he's at 13, I'm at 12. I have one more card in hand. 
So again, I'm kind of feeling pretty good. All right, maybe I can pull this out. Draw a bunch of cards. I think I'm probably digging for U3PO. Or, or Voyeur. You know, I think I probably said, where the, hell, where the heck is my Voyeur at this point? Um, and I play Imbalance to cancel that. Um, retrieval. I make him lose a force. And he finally finds Luke. And that's obviously big. Um, he's going to battle here. Draw one. I'm going to be able to use Johto again to... Uh, Oh, maybe he didn't get it. So, all right. So I wore him down pretty good with the attrition bonus. Um, but he's just going to get Chewy up there. And now I don't even get a destiny here because Johto isn't a pilot. That'd be cool if he was a pilot. He better not be a pilot. I would have been, yeah. I would have been kicking myself. Um, hit and run's an interesting card. Um, so now we're both, you know, pretty low on life force. We both got a handful of damage points going for us. Um, and I'm kind of thinking to myself, I really need to get rid of Luke. Um, and I have Force for a Sense. I have Bad Order out. So what do I do? Do I throw Aura at Luke here? No. Maybe I just get Chelly. Let's see. What's my plan? Yeah, so this was a tough decision. So I was like, I, I need to get a pilot here. I need to be able to draw a Destiny. I need to hopefully not get kicked off this system. So not the ideal spot, or not the ideal way to use her. I wonder... I don't know if I knew what my destinies were. If I could have gotten rid of Luke somehow. Hit her, hit him. Oh, wait. <laughs> Duh. Aura's over here, so I can't deploy Aura. That's why I didn't do that. Um, so I retrieve Iggy, which at this point might even just be better as like a force. Because I'm not going to be able to get him down, really, and be able to use his gun and draw destiny and do all that stuff. So I move P59 in front of Luke, knowing I have Gek, knowing that he's probably going to shuffle. He's going to retrieve three. I should have definitely held that imbalance combo. It would have been better. It would have been, it would still have been one force, right? Am I, am I thinking of that right? Um, with R2. Well, let me check that real quick. So, imbalance combo. I'm thinking of War Doomed. You round. It, what's the rounding on imbalance combo? Maybe someone in the chat knows, but all right, I won't go crazy with it. Um, so, yeah, so he's going to now drain me. I'm running low on life force. He's running low. I think this actually has a couple more turns, so we're almost done. He's able to drain there. I toss IG-88, realizing I'm not going to be able to get him out. Uh, Luke shuffles. Luke drains. Just toss the sense, realizing I can't afford to lose three cards from Life Force to cancel an interrupt. How bad could an interrupt be? And now this is where I got a good suggestion after the game from Eric, who said I probably should have just attacked him. Because I'm, I'm thinking to myself, oh, I have who else do I have left? What characters? What pilots? And I'm like, Zam. I have Zam floating around somewhere, right? <laughs> so I activate. I guess I get fortunate in a way that I'm like, all right, let me see. Let me draw. I'll do my ping. Oh, perfect. I have Zam. So, you know, I got battle orders. So I can battle for free. She's only deploy three. You know, what do I do with Zam here? I know I can track a six. I can either go and attack Luke. So this is actually the point. He's got no cards in hand, so I no force saved. He can't barrier me. He can't, it's a trap. This is probably the key decision point of, if I put Zam here, I'm now power seven. I'm going to draw a six, which gives me a 13. Let's say he's going to be cover seven. I'm not going to overflow him because he's getting plus one, two, three, four. So there's no way I overflow him, but I could ping him for two because of Zam's text. Um, but I'd have to lose the Vigo first, and then Zam, probably. Um, but yeah, okay, this is, so I get my, I get a round of damage through. Yeah, I think Eric was probably right, as usual. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense, James, because yeah, if I would have held it and played it when he got a three for celebration, he would have had to lose two. So that was a, a misplay by me. So I'm just confirming I have the six there. And I could just put Zam down for three, battle for free. Um, make him lose two. And then, as Eric told me after the game, he'd only be able to use the three to retrieve and do nothing else. And then I get another round of damage in with one, two, three, four, something like that. Draw. I, I don't know if the math works. So instead I go Zam to kill Luke. 
figuring, all right, worst case scenario, if I get kicked off Tatooine, at least I can get this free ping damage through with my objective. Um, and that was my reasoning there, knowing that I draw six. Um, but now I'm like leaving my Vigo out to dry. I can't, I didn't want to run away and eat a drain at two, but we'll talk about that. That might've been an option I should have done. Or I could have just left him there and burned the kick, which is what I did. So he draws that, but he can't retrieve because I have secret plans out from his objective. So Luke dies. I declined to grab a card because I want to do something here. All right, so now he's actually down to five life force. So even better. So I'm at five, he's at five. I got a card in hand and he's about to do one, two, three damage. Yeah, it would have been way, yeah. So if I, if I hit him with Zam, you know, Luke gets a drain. He helps with the title retrieval. If Luke stays, I don't know. Again, so now I'm kind of just scared. I probably shouldn't be. Of, of him drawing like a five, getting the bonus, killing my whole ship, and now I can't pay to drain. And what am I damage am I doing then? Because I'm only, I'm pinging two. I can do a shadows draw, but if I don't even have force for <clears throat> to pay for battle plan, I'm done. So that's where I just had to do that. But yeah, in retrospect, if I get the Zam damage, um, yeah, he can he can retrieve for three. He gets a little more damage. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I would have won anyway. Um, but I end up losing this. I think it's by two. So yeah, he does some damage. He's gonna retrieve with celebration, and then hey, let me speed this up. Um, as you go in for a landing. Yeah, so he battles here, he draws a four, that becomes a eight, maybe even more. No, it becomes a nine, wow. Burn the Gick, and I can't get him down quite enough. Um, so yeah, he's gonna win by two. So I got pretty close. So yeah, a couple key decisions. He played pretty well. Um, he made sure I never won Tatooine. I didn't keep Celebration off too long. And I, I don't know what was going on here. I. Maybe I got a little too crazy with uh, trying to make sure I didn't get kicked out. Instead, should have maybe relied on damage. But, you know, not finding my voyeur was big. If I could have cycled that, get some more pings. But, yeah, so those are my five losses. So I lost game 1, 2, 4, 10, and 11. I finished 7 and 5. I went 3 and 3 with agents, which is not um, not something I'm happy with. <laughs> Even though I lost by just a couple to Kyle, just a couple here. Um, and by like a hand filled at Chad in a tough matchup. Um, I went two and one with each of my light sides, Prophet and Y40. Um, and obviously learned some things. So, you know, first month of the year for online championship series. Um, you know, if you guys are interested, sign up. Um, you could still do the season pass. Good competitive online gaming. You can play against anybody. And like I've said like a million times, like these are games that you, every single game is, is really, really good and you learn a lot from. So if you're, new returning or even a veteran player, you know, there's just, just lots of benefits for getting better. Um, so, all right, I will not babble anymore. Thank you everyone for watching. Um, I'll upload this to the channel and, uh, and hopefully you guys enjoy it. All right, take care. Bye.